Hi there, my name is Ben Humphrey and I'm a director, actor, writer, theatre practitioner and adjudicator with the Guild of Drama Adjudicators. I've been asked to record this short webinar today on a subject that I know that many, if not all of you in the SCDA, will be concerned with, and that is choosing a play. The most common questions or comments that I get from teams are, how do you find a play to perform? Or, oh, it's so difficult to find a play to perform, isn't it? And I know that a lot of other adjudicators get this as well. And it actually often makes us very despondent because there are literally thousands upon thousands of good quality published plays to choose from. And that brings us to our first ground rule. The only real way of finding a play to perform or produce is to read them. It's been very popular in recent years for directors or teams to type into a play publishing website the number of characters that they want, the type of play that they want, the length of play that they want, and up pops a selection of plays and they simply pick from one of those the play that they want to perform. Whilst this is a really useful tool in some ways, it also deters people from reading plays and that really is the only way that you can get to grips with actually choosing plays, reading them. Uh, it's often forgotten and it's one of the things that you'll find that most adjudicators will agree on, if nothing else, is the fact that the only way to find a really good play to perform is by reading them. A one-act play you can get through in less than an hour, so there really is no excuse for not reading a play. In fact, you can actually start something new out of it, maybe a play reading group, for example. Um, it will start to develop your own knowledge of plays and theatre as well as being a really useful resource for your group. So I really cannot impress upon you enough the advantage of sitting down and reading plays, even if you're not going to perform them. Type and genre of play. Now this is really important, especially for directors. Now, if you're choosing a play, then I'm going to assume that you are most likely the person that's going to be directing it. And it's therefore imperative that you understand the type or genre of play that you are directing. For example, if you've never directed, been in or studied epic theatre, then you're unlikely to have much success with a piece of Brecht, for example. So if you're new to this, go with what you know. Think back to the times that you've been on stage or you've been involved in productions. Think about how those productions went and what you brought to the table. And what can you bring to the table now? As a director, you're the leader, you're the captain of the ship in many ways. And you've got to have the confidence of the cast, crew and eventually the audience and the adjudicator to be able to produce this play. If you don't understand the type of play that you're directing or producing, then neither will the audience, neither will your cast, and it won't be successful. Cast size and makeup. Now, casting itself is a huge topic when we're talking about the production of a play, and I could fill many, many hours talking about the success or the uh, failure of castings in plays. Uh, for now, what we're going to consider is simply the size and makeup of your cast. You have to have this in your head at all times. It has to suit the space that you're going to be performing in. It has to suit your transport arrangements. Are you okay with the blocking of that many people in your cast? You may well have found the perfect adaptation of Ben-Hur to bring to the stage, but it's going to be impractical to do. Um, so you've got to try and be realistic in your producing goals, and then you'll avoid disappointment down the line. You'll also need to think about your availability of actors. Now, that's not just whether they can actually attend rehearsals, that's who have you got available. If you struggle for strong male actors, then Royal Hunt of the Sun is probably not going to be the play for you. Of course, you can gender reverse casts and roles uh, as long as it's done appropriately and with appropriate artistic license. So all of these things need to be considered when you're choosing a play. Set, props and costume. Now, some groups put on the most exhilarating of plays with nothing more than a black box set, uh, a couple of chairs and some reflective character costume. A young theatre group that I once directed won a festival award for best set and presentation with nothing more than 
four boxes. Um, other groups produce the most exquisite sets, costumes and props that look as if they've come straight off the stage at the RSC or the Royal Court. Now, either of those can win festivals, um, but it needs careful thought. If you haven't got the resources, human or otherwise, to produce elaborate set, props, costumes, then you have to think about how you can bring that play to life in your vision and your way without that stuff. Uh, also, you have to consider the transportation of these things, the number of teams that have to lose an essential piece of set or an essential piece of tech uh, when they get to a festival because they haven't really considered it is staggering. And um, you do often find yourself an educator wondering, you know, how did that slip through the net? How did they not see that that was going to be an issue? Um, so it's always worth giving that very, very careful consideration what you would like to produce and what you are actually able to produce. Because um, something like that can really unsettle a team on the night of performing a play. It can really put you on the back foot. So really think about the venue and your capabilities as a group. Can we actually produce what this play requires? content of the play. Now this may seem strange and it may seem like it falls into the genre or type category of choosing a play, but I think it's definitely worth its own section. The bottom line is, is the play interesting? I've always believed that a piece of theatre must do at least one of two things. It either has to entertain an audience or it has to educate an audience. Some plays do one or the other. Occasionally you'll find plays that do both. Unfortunately, there are a lot of plays out there that do neither, and those plays rarely show the groups off to the best of their abilities. Now, it's often said that an adjudicator is not there to judge the play, but only the production of the play itself. And whilst this is partly true, if you start with a brilliant play, you've already got so much going for you as a team. It certainly helps. Plays that are simply not suitable for the stage are often produced because they contain the right cast makeup or they're cheap or the group doesn't wish to offend the resident playwright. If you as a team, as a group or as a director are not committed to what you're putting on the stage, it will show. The audience will become disinterested and consequently so will the adjudicator. You have to believe in what you're putting on the stage, whether that's the subject material or whether that's the story. You have to be passionate about it to be able to bring it to life. Budget, finances and paperwork. Now, whilst we would all love to live in a world where money is no object, um, I'm afraid that is a false hope that we will probably never, ever see achieved, certainly within the a theatrical world. Now, a few items in your initial budget should certainly include, but not be limited to, festival entry fees, written adjudication fees if you'd like one, license fees, what happens if you win more, you win the rounds, then you have to go through more rounds, which is more license fees, uh, the purchase of scripts as well, costumes, set and props, transportation costs, for example, transporting a cast of two, much cheaper than transporting a cast of 15. And these are only associated costs with the first round of festivals. If you're successful and you go on to the second, third, fourth, and sometimes even fifth round of festivals, then costs can be absolutely eye-watering. It can be an expensive business to stage a festival play, and whilst that should not put you off from doing so, it should be a consideration. There are other boring or mundane factors that you need to give thought to, such as cuts to the script. They have to be made with the author's permission. Authors can withhold that permission uh, without any reason at all, and the adjudicator must be notified of them. There are certain authors and publishers, for example, that won't let you make any cuts to the script whatsoever, no matter how artistically valid those cuts might be. So you've got to consider these boring things when you're putting on festival play. Um, I know it's not necessarily why we go into theatre, but again, if you can Consider all of these things before you start rehearsals, before you start pulling the play together, then you'll have a much easier time of it during the production. So let's go back and look at a checklist of what we're looking at when we're choosing a play. Number one, 
Are you familiar with the genre or type of play that you're choosing? If not, make sure that you research it and you get to grips with the nuance of it. Think about how you're going to present that to a stage. Each different genre of play has certain rules and those rules adjudicators will know about. So you have to make sure that you know about them too. Two, do you have the right cast for the play? Think about size of cast, strengths of cast, and the general requirements of characters. As I said, casting is a separate topic that perhaps we might discuss at a later date, but for now, think about your size of cast and how you're going to work with them. Number three, have you thought about the practicalities of staging the play? Does it require large amounts of period costume, a large set, a revolving stage floor? And can your group deliver these things? If they can't deliver some of it, is the play still going to be successful without it? Think about those things. Four, is the play a good play? Does it interest you and your group or have you chosen it because it's easy? If it doesn't interest you, it won't interest an audience. And five, have you thought about the cost implications of producing this play? License fees, cuts transports. Think about the whole process, not just what you're going to put onto the stage. If you do that first, then you'll find the production process a whole lot easier. I hope that's been of some use for you. If you're an experienced director or an experienced team, then much of what I've said probably won't be news to you, but sometimes it does help for somebody else to be able to say it. If you're new to directing festival plays or you're new to amateur theatre and uh, the process of entering festival plays, then hopefully what I've said will be of some comfort to you and you can take what you need from it. The SCDA has a fantastic library full of one act and full length plays. Please take advantage of it. Please join the SCDA and make sure that you uh, read those plays. Going back to that very first thing that we talked about, how to choose a play. Bottom line is you've got to read them and the SCDA will help you do that. Take care.